It didn't have. Super. Okay, great. So once again, good morning. Um, so last time when we had met, we had talked about Facebook. Today we'll cover Instagram. So before that, we'll just do a quick uh, recap of what we had talked about in the previous uh, session. So last week we talked about Facebook. Uh, you know, I, I told you guys how uh, so the whole social media revolution started with that, um, although there were uh, social media handles before that too. But Facebook made marketing on social media quite mainstream. You know, everyone started using it to get leads, inquiries, uh, build up their own personal brand, drive some awareness. So we had talked about some important entities, which is there on Facebook, like profiles, pages and groups. And I told all of you as real estate agents and realtors, how important it is to leverage Facebook groups because people are there from different communities, different, um, I would say walks of life, looking at different kinds of properties, talking about different things. People need information. People, talk, you know, they have conversations about the market, conversations about problems. They want solutions. So like that, it's a very different kind of vibe altogether on Facebook. And like some of you also asked me that, you know, like Facebook, Instagram, the content is mostly similar. So what is different? So Facebook has a more seasoned and mature audience, you know, like people who are generally 40 plus, 45 plus, they're more active on Facebook as compared to Instagram, which is a younger audience, a younger lot. So um, Instagram would probably have first time home buyers or, you know, people who are renting or looking for a lease or something like that. So it's a more younger audience. And uh, of late, the whole universe of real estate uh, realtors, they uh, have, you know, like really gotten on Instagram and they're creating all kinds of interesting content to, you know, like excite people, entertain them, build their personal brand, keep them hooked on for, you know, like different things. So today we'll try to have a look at that. And we'll also try to understand what makes Instagram so different. So uh, I didn't like stress a lot on content creation in the previous one because the objective there was to understand social media, you know, like how content works, what kind of content goes on social media, people like, comment, share. Today we'll also talk about content creation a bit because it's also important to understand that if you guys... Yep. Oh, okay, sure. I'll just add them. No problem. I'll just do that. So sorry, guys. Just a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, today we'll also look at creating content and also like how you guys can go about your Instagram. So some of the things we'll talk about today is first understanding Instagram. It's different from Facebook because people do use Facebook on their phones, but um people generally don't use their phones to create content for Facebook. It's a very rare thing. You know, generally people just look for news, information, networking with friends and like that. And of course, gathering information. Lots of times when people use Facebook for marketing, for their own personal branding, they use it on their laptops and devices. You know, they get into groups, have conversations, but it's like to each his own. But uh, Instagram is completely mobile. So, you know, like it's a mobile app. That's how it started. Uh, uh, they made an app where you could take pictures of things, you know, make things look really good, really well. Uh, and of course, show off a little, you know, you had a great Thanksgiving weekend. You went somewhere, you saw fall colors, you uh, had good time with the family. So people started putting all those kinds of content and make uh, made them look really visually nice, you know, like really, really photogenic. And that's how this app became popular because everyone then started showing off a bit. The vanity was in place. Uh, the need to look good was there, you know, like uh, good places to travel, good uh, food to eat, good things to do. And that's how this became huge. And then people started uh, getting in it for marketing. And when uh, a social media platform becomes very popular, people start using it to build influence, especially for themselves. Uh, so they would start, uh, you know, talking about things they're experts at. They would start talking about the market, their, their industry in general. So like that, this became very popular. And we'll look at some examples in a bit uh, and see. So another very important thing, which I feel I'll spend some time on today is how to set up your Instagram, because that is something which I think a few of you would need help with. So we'll cover some, you know, basics there. Then uh, more importantly, content formats and best practices, because Instagram has so many things to do. You know, it's not just take a photo and put it. It's much more than that. So we'll do a deeper dive into what kind of content formats, what kind of videos, photos, what to do. And then personal branding best practices. So uh, not only real estate, but like any industry, even a industry like mine, marketing, people have become like gurus and wizards on Instagram. They're, they're building influence. They are, you know, like keeping people hooked with their content. And then that's how they do lead generation also. So we'll talk about that. And lastly, a little bit on measurement because Instagram 
uh, has a lot of content and you need to see and evaluate which content is working and which is not. So we'll, we'll cover that and how you can assess what is working for you. And then we'll do a small practical demonstration on, you know, like making a creative and stuff. So we'll, we'll come to all that in a bit. So let's, let's start with today's uh, session. So the first thing, which is very important for all of us to focus on is understanding Instagram and its importance. Because once we understand the platform as a user, then we can use it for our personal branding. And believe me, you, uh, lots of people, especially in North America, and of course, outside are using Instagram for their business, you know, even real estate, I have a lot of examples today, realtors, real estate agents, even salespeople, like they're, they're using it to the fullest, and we need to understand how to go about it. So, so we'll cover uh, each one of these things one by one. So let's first talk about Instagram as a platform. So earlier, there used to be a lot of photo sharing uh, websites like Flickr and Photopea and this and that, and people would take photos, edit them, share them. So this, so when Instagram came, it just changed the whole, you know, uh, uh, process in which people were doing things. You could just take out your phone, take a picture, post it and tell everyone that you're doing something interesting. So it just combines that experience of, you know, like quick social media conversation with a visual, like a photo or a video or something like that. It's very easy to use and very, you know, fast in real time. Like, for example, if I'm like uh, right now doing a workshop, I can just put a story and, you know, my network can see that, okay, he's doing a workshop. I can go live. And I can have some people get a taste of, you know, what a workshop with me is like. And maybe, you know, if they want, they can contact me for more workshops. So like that, people can use it in any way. And it's very real time. There's lots of photo editing stuff here, which especially with the younger lot, you know, it excites them a lot, putting effects on photos and looking good. And that's so like I always, like I told you in the beginning, like the need to look good is pretty much there, you know. So, uh, so these are some of the things which also makes this uh, app very interesting. Um, in a way, it's like a journal, you know, which people uh, can look into. So like a peep into your life, uh, what's happening, what are you doing? You can connect with people globally, uh, locally. You can connect with people with shared interests. Um, and then it's like a social network. So you can have those interactions, just like Facebook and Twitter. You can talk to people, message people, having, uh, you know, like have questions, answers, so like that. So we'll, we'll look at use cases and we'll talk about all of this. So I think the very first thing that we all need to look at, like the very first uh, and most important thing is how to set this up. Because, you know, uh, it can be a little... Uh, complicated initially so we'll just have a look at that uh it's a mobile app so it's as simple as that if you've got a apple phone or a, a, any other phone you just go to your app store and you search for instagram and you install it once you've done that you have to sign up so uh, as we can see uh once we sign up we have to uh set up a profile so we'll just talk about you know like what all things go into that and instagram has two options one you can use instagram as a user two you can set it up as a business so there's a difference for both. And I'll just tell you, if I install Instagram and I uh, uh, use it as a user, so I can just keep on putting my pictures and photos and that's it. But if I set it up as a business, I can have my contact details. I can have my email ID. People can come drop in their inquiries. I can run ads. I can advertise my business. So like that, uh, it gives more features. So the moment we install Instagram on our phones, it's very important to go to settings. Once we go into settings, we have to go to accounts and we have to choose our account type. Uh, just a second. I'll just, I think a few more people are joining. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you have to go to settings uh, and then you go to account and you choose your account type. So account type basically means whether you are a person or a business and you can choose the business account. Once you choose the business account then Instagram will ask you, okay, what is your business email? your professional email, your website, or this and that, you can put all of that. So then all those things are appearing in your profile. So I'll just come to the next one. Right. So once uh, we log into Instagram, it asks us like, are you a creator or are you a business? So we choose business that, okay, uh, I'm a business. I, I want to market myself. Once you do that, then you have to fill in some important details. Like, for example, you have to fill in your name and handle. And I'll just explain what that is as well. So just how like everyone has a unique email ID. Everyone has a unique email address where they can be reached at. On Instagram, you have to have a unique handle name. So for example, this is a handle name. So while there can be many Shubhindus on Instagram, but my handle name will be unique. So, you know, my individual name will be unique. So that handle name is something you have to keep for yourself. And, uh, you know, like 
generally when uh, real estate agents and realtors they create their instagram handles they they do mention that they are a realtor or real estate agent so that it's very direct and you know it's like people understand in first go that okay so this is the person that's what they do so have a very unique kind of a handle name once you've put that then you have to put something known as a bio so a bio is basically a description like of you know uh, about you uh, it's like that small three four liner uh, explanation of who you are and what you do so people try to be very creative with that people try to uh, uh, be a little wise or people show different aspects of life when i was doing my research i saw a lot of real estate agents and realtors uh, talk about being uh, good dads moms and uh, you know uh, talking about real estate so everyone has their own way of writing their uh, bios we'll look at a few in a bit so once you put that then you put in your website link or your whatever your contact details so whatever is there so when those basic hygienic things are put on the app so then uh, you know your uh, at least profile is ready on instagram we call it handle your handle is ready to you know uh, like to connect with people so then once that's set uh, you uh, uh, people who can find you or you can text them or you can uh, comment them you can follow other people so we'll have a look at all of that you know like in a second so you do that and they come to your profile so they'll see okay this is the profile okay this is the face okay this is the description uh, this is what they look like this is what they uh, you know kind of content that they put so that explains in a second who you are what you do uh, so it's a very hygiene kind of a thing which is very important to have uh, many times people don't have a very nicely written bio or a very difficult handle you know like which no one will remember so uh, it becomes a little less interesting so people generally try to make their handles a little interesting people try to you know write their bios in a more interesting way so that people can remember that so i'll just uh, show you a few so these are a few uh, realtors and real estate agents uh, so from north america so this is i think one gentleman uh, daniel so you know he's very uh, clearly mentioned that he is a realtor and uh, the handle is also very unique so this is the handle and this is the name so now there can be many daniel gluckins on instagram but the handle name has to be unique it has to be you know uh, specific to him so that when someone tags him messages him or when someone you know even finding a realtor wants to remember him they remember by his handle name so that's how things work here so uh, daniel uh, uh, daniel gth uh, daniel g the realtor so that's the handle name the unique one uh this is the bio you know so uh, uh, he's used a couple of emojis to make it a little more interesting like you know like a little exciting superhero realtor and joy creator you know so that's how he's done his own personal branding i i, I give people smiles i make them happy i i, I give them joy so he's written it like that so he must be a, a founder of some uh, brokerage i guess so founder of the glucken group powered by ad compass some parent company i guess and marketing specialist also so you know with an emoji so in one go you can go and understand okay who this guy is this guy is a realtor he does this 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 is a website and you get a hang of this let's look at another example so this lady michelle uh, her name is michelle halbert again she is mentioned real estate underscore michelle in her uh, handle so you know in one go uh, people can understand she is into real estate and can talk to her about everything real estate now if she wouldn't mention that if it would just be you know like uh, all smiles michelle so people wouldn't understand okay what does she do they'll have probably come to her handle and look at you know what she does but in one go you understand and it's unique it it keeps her profile or handle as we call it on instagram unique so she's kept it like that so she's mentioned she's a real estate agent sales person at so and so company mom to three dog mom to i have seen a lot of realtors and real estate people especially sales people from real estate also show a human side of their life because social media is not just shop talk the moment it just becomes shop talk people start getting bored if i if, if on my personal instagram handle if i just give knowledge you know if if, if i just do salesy work that i can change your life i can get you more business i will add wings to your business i'll make your marketing better people will get bored people will be like okay this guy is just selling stuff we're not interested so generally by convention people try to show their human side people try to show um their personal life people try to show uh, you know the emotional aspect of their day along with the professional one so it's a mix of both uh, some people do either or some do a mix it's you know to each their own but generally by like convention i've seen people also talk about their personal life on their instagram while talking about shop so uh, 
mom to three dog mom she talks about or she's also mentioned her husband who must who's a builder i guess builder in the 66 you know so a builder fashion design something something and then her website michellehalbert.c so again this is like you know a quick business card kind of a thing that you know in one go you will understand what she does and what she talks about so yeah. having this thing called the bio and that too written in a neat way is very important it just can't be, you know, Michel Halbert, I'm a real estate agent, talk to me if you want to sell or buy homes. So then that becomes a little too, uh, I would say, cliche or a little too uh, salesy. So we should avoid that. Then uh, another example. So this one's a very simple bio. This gentleman has not, uh, you know, made it very big and with emojis and this and that. He's kept it simple. He's, he's kept it to the point. So I think uh, his name is Ara Yoremian, a realtor, royal some services, brokerage, supporter of some foundation, and then the places. So this I found very interesting because, you know, in one go, without even having to look at his posts, I can see that, okay, this guy deals in uh, real estate in Vaughan and, you know, Toronto and other places. So you, you get to know where this person operates out of. So it's a very subjective and to each his own kind of a thing when we do a bio. But there are two things that are very important. One you have to have the right keywords in your Instagram bio because tomorrow if someone is searching for, a, how, how did I find them? I found them because I searched for realtors and real estate people on Instagram and their profiles popped up because they have the right keywords on their Instagram bio. Similarly, one, it's very important to have those right keywords mentioned in your profile bio. And second, it has to be a little creative, maybe a little uh, uh, human, uh, emotional, or a little interesting. It just can't be boring, you know, like I sell homes for a uh, uh, for a living can't be the vibe that comes out of it because then people generally don't want to engage. They're like, okay, this is just sale, sale, sale. So just strictly in terms of bio, because there are uh, do's and don'ts for the content part also that the content we create. So we'll come to that once we do content, but just for the bio itself, it's important to have the right handle name, which is unique and small. Now had his handle name been, you know, uh, RIR, MN, blah, 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 blah. So long, no one would remember it and no one can tag it. it. It's complex. So it should be small. It should be to the point you can have real estate or whatever mentioned in your handle name. Your name and your uh, bio should also be neat, clean, and with all the information. Have your contact details. So his, I believe, is not a business profile, else his email and phone number and those things would be there. So you should go to settings in your app and change it to a business profile so that you know you can add those things as well so uh, these are the few hygienic things which are very important once we create an instagram handle to summarize it should talk about who you are uh, why should people follow you because you know you need to follow people and people will follow you uh, a very big mistake that a lot of people do on instagram or any social media as a matter of fact is they will uh, uh, put content and expect people to like and engage with their content, but they themselves wouldn't do it. You know, like uh, uh, I, I start putting posts and wait for people to like it, but I'm not liking anyone's post. I am not following anyone. Why will they follow me? Why will they like my post? So you have to be equally engaging on this platform. You have to be equally hooked on to, you know, things, looking for people talking about real estate, people talking about the market, follow them, like their post, ask them a question, send them a message. It is a little tedious. It is a little time taking, but Instagram evaluates all these things and makes your profile come up on the top if you're very active and you know, you're engaging with people. So yeah, so that's about the bio. Now uh, we'll do a small activity. Just take out two minutes and do a quick activity. So uh, is there anyone who already has an Instagram account here, like for their uh, practice or is anyone who's already using, is anyone already using, you are? So, okay, so uh, what have you mentioned in your bio? And if any of you have don't have one, so can you like just take two minutes and think what kinds of things you can mention in your Instagram bio? So we just take two minutes. And I think those who are on Zoom can also mention that in the chat window. Okay, yeah. So we'll take two minutes and I think there's some internet issue. We'll just like check that also. Yeah. So let's take two minutes and then uh, do an exchange of thoughts. Before I set up a Instagram and then no hand keeping too much, so that's why I have to be doing it. 
Sure, okay, yeah, but uh, please do it because it is now more important than ever to have a presence here. And, uh, you know, people might think twice, especially the younger lot, might think twice before calling you, but they will definitely once go to your Instagram and see what you do, what kind of real estate you are into, uh, what things you... Generally, this has become a validator these days, you know, like like earlier people used to search someone on Google or LinkedIn. Okay, Shubhendu, he's come here to talk about social media. Does he know? So they'll go to my LinkedIn and see what I've done in life to, you know, teach people about social media. Now people might go to my Instagram and quickly check who I am, what I do. So that way it's very important. Yeah. So just one more minute and then we'll uh, proceed. <clears throat> Smooth landing with Shreen Real Estate, Aerospace, Engineering, Sales, Operating in GT and its neighborhood. Okay, nice. I'll yes. So, Facebook, uh, whatever uh, profile name and everything I can use uh, as same things. You should always have the same thing. Like uh, if you have your presence on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, even YouTube, it should be the same handle name everywhere. That makes your brand, personal brand come out as, you know, like more legit that, you know, you have the same handle name everywhere. So yeah, that's a good question. It should be same. Yes. So this is my handle. I haven't written much about marketing, this, that, just simple stuff. So just one line, just trying to be really creative, just a kid with a pad and a pen and a big imagination because I'm into advertising. Advertising is all about ideas. So I've tried to keep it like that. And my company's handle and my website I've mentioned here. and that's pretty much it. So, you know, like I've kept it like that. So you need not have big, big Instagram bios. You know, you need not have a lot of pages and pages of stuff. Simple, small stuff also works, right? Cool. Uh, so my handle name on Instagram is Badka Bhaiya. And can anyone guess what it means? It's every like Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, everywhere it's Badka Bhaiya. Anyone who understands Hindi or Urdu can probably guess it. Yes. <laughs> that's why. So that's so that's now what my friends, and in fact, my clients have also started calling me. Hey, Badka Bhaiya, how are you? You know, so, so that's become like my personal branding. So that's why people try to keep handles that are very unique, very different, uh, you know, uh, very, I would say interesting. So it's like that. So, yes. So, okay. Coming back to the exercise. So yes, please. Any thoughts? Like what are some of the things that can, you guys can mention on your Instagram bio that makes it unique and interesting. And Zoom people can also mention in the chat. I think one person has already done that. Please, I mean, anyone, you guys can take the cue. What, what can you mention? Sure. Okay. I mean, if you have like a certification, maybe you can mention that. I, I'm not very not like well versed with how it is here in uh, Ontario, but I think there's some license or some uh, certification required to be in real estate. So maybe we can mention that. That could be one thing. If you're part of an association, like if you have a mem if you're a member of some association for real estate, I think there are a couple of them. Maybe you can mention that member of this because when we write such things, it makes things more interesting. You know, it 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 makes things more legit. It makes things more. Uh, I would say real for people and then especially new people who, who, who are looking for, you know, someone they, uh, they see, okay, this guy is like certified, this lady is okay, well, a member of this association. So those things also add more value. Like, you know, they make things look more legit. Uh, maybe you can mention how many uh, uh, homes you have sold or you know, made people buy so something like that. I saw one real estate person had mentioned, uh, uh, made uh, more than 400 families happy, something like this, like over 400 families, served more than 400 families. So like that, you, you know, you can have different things. Anyone else?
early morning exercise for the mind <laughs> okay never mind yeah so i mean some of the hooks could be like i showed you in the examples above uh, you know you can talk about the organization you can talk about what you do some uh, one lady had also talked about she's a mom dog mom has a couple of kids you know like that you can have a mix of different things and make sure that you know your account looks very real very human and experienced so these things should come out of it so okay so once you have installed instagram you've had a nice bio put in the app now comes the part where you have to create content on the app to you know network with people engage with people so that people also follow you the whole the whole race or the whole i would say uh, effort goes around getting more followers making people engage with you it sounds very tedious it sounds like too much work but trust me it's not once you start putting content it starts reaching out to more people they find it it's nice they start engaging they start connecting that's how you know everyone gets followers of course the content has to be a bit good the content has to be exciting so that is what now we'll you know talk about so what are some good content formats and practices and some posting strategy because instagram can be very intimidating if you really get hooked on to it you will get confused when should i post morning evening afternoon how much should i post 10 times a day two times a day what should i post photos videos so let's try to break all of that down and make it simple for you so we'll 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 try to do that so the very first thing like the very first fundamental for instagram especially for real estate agents realtors etc is since instagram is visual it's 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 very like i said in the beginning there's a bit of vanity attached to it you know it's it's very the need to look good is there everything has to be nice and sound and crisp you know so we have to make use of good photos and videos that's a principle that's a given you know we can't mess with that so if you look at it a uh, couple of examples here like i saw one real estate person having a mix of you know their personal stuff then also some listings and properties uh, in a video format uh, some uh, deal done or maybe it's a company where there's some partners so they've mentioned that uh, just listed so you know they've listed a property and they've mentioned that so this particular lady had a mix of you know both work and personal life i think this is a home she has sold so she is you know like standing next to the sold sign so like that so uh, uh, you don't see a lot of text heavy stuff here you see good photos and you see uh, you know like experiences and things that she has done throughout the day you see you, you see a part like a sneak peek into her life and also her work so you know like that uh, then if we look at it just a second i'll just zoom in here yeah so here also someone has put a picture of you know selling a house then going to some gardens going to some wedding you know stuff like that so it's a mix then some of the handles that i saw they had a very different outlook uh, for example this is one lady who creates a lot of content and knowledge around real estate and that is one of the best ways of getting business from instagram getting leads and inquiries from instagram for example she's saying real estate agents talking to loan officers about interest rates right now and some kind of funny but knowledgeable video or uh, when the listing agent tells you the sellers are negotiable you know so that's funny like she's trying to be funny so she is creating humor she is creating knowledge and she is giving information to people when people search for real estate realtor realtor in toronto and people when people who generally are planning to buy a house maybe today or 3 months from now 6 months from now they'll at least follow her for that advice and that knowledge and in my previous session last week also i told you you know many times people ask me why would someone follow someone who's giving sales centric knowledge or you know someone who's talking about a particular field because everyone wants to sound knowledgeable and the need to look good is not only there on instagram but in real life as well so you know when when you follow a couple of people who talk sense about real estate you then use that knowledge to you know have conversations with your friends and family and you try to come out as smart and wise so that's why also people follow such handles and such content creators are you know like just getting into those conversations and driving a lot of value from those conversations so for example if i would follow her for real estate knowledge 
maybe a couple of months from now, if I'm looking at selling my house, I can probably reach out to her team and tell her that so-and-so is there. Do you have someone you can recommend? She can say, yeah, you can talk to my team or talk to me or talk to so-and-so. So all these uh, efforts bear fruits eventually and gradually it gets compounded. So it's like that. So and there are different ways of doing things, you know, putting pictures, sharing knowledge, uh, just going in front of the camera and talking about things. So yeah, that's that. Apologies, just one second. I'll quickly come back to the slide. Yeah. Uh, then one handle that I saw, you know, uh, who had a very interesting take. Uh, so they would do a very hygienic and systematic mix of posts on Instagram. So one would be a listing, then something related to family. One would be a listing coming soon, then something related to family. One, uh, some personal video like playing ice hockey, then something related to the market. So this gentleman had like a mix of both personal and work. And that was his way of doing things, which also looks very nice. So it's marketing in itself is very subjective. You have to test what works, what kind of content people are engaging with. But everyone has their own, you know, unique way of doing things. Um, here, this was one realtor who, uh, uh, real estate agent, sorry, who's talking about listings, going and showing listings, uh, talking about the current market prices, uh, sneak peek from what happens in her day, something as simple as starting the day with a cup of coffee. You no, know, we all at some point might feel who wants to know this, who wants to see how my day starts. But trust me, lots of people who are interested in real estate, who, who follow people, you know, just for good content, they are even, you know, like always looking forward to what that person is doing in the day, what that, how that person's day starts, what they do, what their life is like what kind of work they do. And that's how you build your social media cloud. That's how you build your social media presence. So in that sense, uh, these things matter a lot. So, you know, you have to have a mix of content. So of course this comes like, this will create a question Then what kind of content should we make? What should that mix be? So we'll talk about that in a bit. Now, another very important thing, Social media has also, you know, like surpassed the classic print and newspaper aesthetic because earlier, again, speaking from a very real estate point of view, you would have a good picture of a listing, a very big photo of the real estate agent or the realtor in formals, and you would have some very good information written about the listing and a phone number and this and that. But social media has surpassed that aesthetic because people are on social media for some fun, for some good content. And people are very smartly using it for marketing. So let me show you one example. For example, uh, this is one real estate agent. What he has done is, I found it very interesting and I thought I'll come and show you guys. This market is dangerous to go alone. Having an experienced agent on your side gives you the best chance of success on your journey. If you're looking to buy or sell this season, I can help you. Give me a call, right? And he has used a very classic video game kind of visual for this, you know, uh, how we had those video games decades ago. It's dangerous to go alone, take this and he's put his picture. So it's a very unique and creative way of doing things. Uh, one might say that, but this looks very uh, flamboyant or it looks very uh, unique, but this is the kind of content that people get hooked onto on social media and they like and they'll share it and they'll comment or whatsoever. So, you know, like that. Another example uh, that I saw was not very, I would say, uh, uh, creative in terms of the visual, but the information. For example, here's a quick rundown of July 22 in the GTA. So according to latest numbers, and then he's given all that information and he's given a quick market update. Now, if I want to be in the center of all interesting conversations around real estate, if I am planning to buy a house in a couple of months and uh, or sell mine, uh, I would want to know about the market and how the given the current times and everything very volatile, uh, I would need such information. So he is, you know, catering to that information. People are getting hooked onto such content. And then, you know, you, uh, he gets followers and then people know that this is a realtor and we can, you know, talk to him or an agent and talk to him. So like that. So it's important to understand what kind of content also would interest people. It can't be having a coffee in the morning every day, you know, because that wouldn't excite people. That wouldn't make people feel, uh, you know, that, okay, this is only why I'm following him or her. So such content is also important where we give information, where we give value. Uh, sometimes some uh, 
informative content can also be packaged really nice. Like some examples from Remax, you know, signs you're ready to buy a home, you are ready to renovate, you need to grow, you you know, you crave outdoor space, you want to make your own rules, you've been saving to invest, long-term happiness, simple. Like, you know, and of course, once you have that branding, you know, people know whom to connect with. So this is more from a company's perspective or a brokerage firm's perspective, but you know, like such content can be made by an agent or a realtor as well. It's, it's uh, not that difficult. Another very important aspect of social media is engagement. Like I'd also mentioned in the previous session, people love, they're all chatty Cathy's is the exact word I'd use. Everyone wants to have conversations, talk, you know, engage, uh, uh, peak someone's mind, talk about something, uh, even question, challenge, you know, uh, share their opinion. This is human nature and people love doing it. So if we ask a lot of questions, people will answer, they will engage. And the more engagement we get on our handle and content, Instagram will show our content to more people. That's the science behind these platforms. You know, it makes people hooked onto that content. So here they're asking, what is one piece of advice you wish you'd known as a first time home buyer? And I'm sure everyone would have some knowledge here. You know, like everyone would want to share some experience. Oh, do this. Oh, do that. Oh, I, I, I fell into this. Oh, I didn't think about this. So this kind of content makes people engage more. And, and when you ask questions, people do want to answer because everyone wants to share their experiences and opinion, you know, what, what they've gone through. So uh, it's very important to also have a mix of questions and, you know, uh, thought starters and opinions also on your Instagram content, because then people engage with you. They do look forward to your response, especially uh, real estate is a topic where there can be n number of questions, you know, like n number of uh, thoughts and opinions and discussions. So we can leverage all of that. So it's important to, you know, have the right mix and format of content. Now, a very important thing to make note of is, and I had again, uh, you know, spent some time on this when we were doing Facebook, the content should not look very text heavy and cliche. So can, can like, uh, 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 you, uh, some of you tell me like why this looks a little weird or not as aesthetically pleasing as the examples that I showed earlier. Like, can, can you tell me like, what is the difference? And I think, uh, the rest of you can tell in the chat window, those who are from, is it, I think that's because of the internet. So is there another internet I can connect to because it's unstable. So Zoom is prompting your internet is unstable. So I, I'm recording this. I'll share the recording. This time I'm recording it in my device. So I'll share it with her. So let's, yeah. Anyone? Hello, I'm writing same as in Hakim. Yeah, because there's too much to look at. Like if I zoom into, let's say one of these uh, here. So for a newspaper ad, this would have been okay. You know, because newspaper ads go in this format. <laughs> picture, text, uh, real estate agent, realtor, uh, brokerage details. But this kind of content is really not very good for Instagram because uh, Instagram people come to for, for, you know, like a little fun, creative content, a little uh, information based, knowledge based, personalized content. This looks like an ad and it looks like, uh, you know, that the gentleman is trying to sell something which he is because the home is, you know, in Brampton is just listed. So generally people don't find it very exciting anything else like any 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 other observation which you can make take a guess or just thought it's very subjective like you can uh, share your thoughts yeah, I mean, uh, pic although uh, the picture in this is clear, that's not a problem. But uh, uh, sometimes there's just too much to look at. Because, you know, on Instagram, when you're scrolling, uh, there are so many pictures and videos coming. Uh, and if this comes in the center, you might, people might skip it past thinking, what is this? You know, like, looks like an ad. Also, Instagram as an app is about interacting within the app. You know, it's about interacting, sending a message, liking, putting a comment, clicking a button, putting a phone number in such big font is not legit because uh, no one will look at an Instagram post and then call. It's, it's generally not the behavior of people on such platforms. You know, they will not say, okay, 
uh, I saw a listing. I'll just quickly call while it's not a yellow page or a you know a telephone book. It's not like that. If someone is really interested, they will click on their profile. They will go to the profile, click on call button and call. No, so there's no point of writing such big big phone numbers and stuff like that. It's it's just waste of effort. If it's a newspaper ad, it's great. If you're sending this to people on WhatsApp, maybe it's okay. But for Instagram, it doesn't look good. So, and that is that. Another important thing: sometimes people just put too much content. Like for example, if you look at this, uh, this looks like a newspaper ad altogether. Although it's very nicely made, but not for Instagram because when it will come on the phone, it will come in a very small size, right? It won't come in a very big or a giant size. And then this becomes too small for people to read on the phone, right? Like you, people won't like, you know, no one puts that much effort. It has to be like one quick look and you get the, you know, gist of things. So one line, two lines of text is more than enough with one good visual. That's it. So again, this looks more like a print ad and not an Instagram post. So these are some of the don'ts. Okay. So yeah, I think another takeaway, which is, uh, I believe uh, not very exciting is having your own picture in every post because uh, uh, you know this looks a little uh, for uh, I would say not gimmicky but a little templatized. You know it 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 looks just very templatized. Maybe people will take notice of this one. Then again, this one people might think, oh, it's the same thing. Forget it. Oh, what is it? So. Maybe not have it so templatized and, you know, like big, big picture of yourself in every content. Like I showed you some good examples earlier. They were trying different content formats. Even if they were there in the post or the video, uh, you know, they they, uh, they were either speaking about something or a different look. And maybe, you know, just like how you normally do things. But this looks a little templatized. So if we can avoid that, that also looks really good. So, yes. So then... Uh, comes to the question like there are different types of content formats on Instagram you know it's not just photo or video it's not just you know one picture or one video there are different things some of these have now also gone like uh, Instagram used to have a property called IGTV Instagram TV where you could put big big format videos but slowly it's removing that so there's no point in you know discussing that but apart from that you can put pictures and videos on Instagram you can uh, take very good photos, upload it. You can take videos, put it. You can shoot your own video, talk about something sensible, upload it. Stories are like those small format uh, videos. I'll just show you, of course, in a bit. They are like those small pictures and videos that shows the glimpse of what you're doing real time. So images and videos that you put in the feed on Instagram, uh, they're more of you know uh, what you did and like a collage or a collection of photos in your feed. Whereas stories are like a quick snackable format content. I will just show and it will clarify, it, you know, like you'll understand the difference. Carousals are basically those albums with multiple photos. So, you know, you can keep on scrolling through them. So if you've gone somewhere, you can put a carousal or if you have some knowledge, you can put multiple pictures and just scroll through them. Live is when you go live, you know, you broadcast yourself. So I can right now go to my Instagram app, uh, put it here, go live. And all my followers will see that I'm talking about this or that. People, if they go to Niagara Falls, they go live. You know, they, they show and tell people that, see, I'm, I'm at Niagara Falls. People, if they, uh, especially people who have good followers, they go live and they have conversations with their followers. Like, hey guys, I'm live. I'm taking any questions. If you guys have any questions, please mention in the comments and I'll answer them. Lots of celebrities and influencers and even people who have like good followers, they, you know, go live and do these things. Shopping is for brands and businesses who are selling something. Like let's say you are an uh, apparel brand, fashion brand. You can tag your product, your website and put a price and people can buy it from Instagram itself. It's become like a marketplace. Reels are the most recent Instagram content format pieces. Uh, reels are basically videos and pictures which are like 15 to 30 seconds. In fact, more, I think they keep on changing the time limit. Uh, I think it's uh, half a minute, one minute, something like that. And you can do something funny in that. You can talk about something interesting in that. You can show some very nice uh, video and picture about something and share it with your friends and they will see that long format video. So uh, there's a very big difference between stories and reels. I'll, I'll just show you in one second. Stories is more like quick, quick, you know, you scroll uh, through them and just see what that person is up to. Reels is more about a longer video format where, you know, you're talking about things, showing something. Lots of content creators use reels to show 
uh, to to like uh, make people laugh or you know like uh, entertain them or give some information and they use stories for just some announcement or a quick message or something like that so let's let's look at these examples to understand these better so uh just one second okay so this is what an instagram feed looks like so these uh, uh once you log into your phone or once you log into instagram and you're following a couple of people so all the people whom you're following their stories will appear here so these are stories it's called stories these are those quick content formats and snackable pieces where you can see what those people are up to there are some brands some people you know stuff like that then this thing here in the bottom which is you know here this is the feed with the posts and videos where where you post pictures and post videos you know like different different things it's like uh, this is one of my posts like what i was doing on the long weekend funnily it is coming here right so it's like that so this is where people post that and you get that in the feed this is some ad of a cricket tournament another brand 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 you know someone had a good vacation so like that so stuff like that so some brand is talking about mental health you know so like that so this is where you see all the static content or the video content which you scroll but the quick glimpse into what is happening in one's day that you get to see here for example uh, let's say a friend of mine uh, so she has put something funny so this is like a story uh, this is again someone was uh, maybe at a stand up comedy show or someone was working in the library something like that uh, some people share funny things in stories so you know stories is more horizontal scroll and quick glimpse of what people are doing so like a very quick snackable content whereas posts and videos are the vertical scroll you know like what people have been up to so uh, and information now uh, for example uh, let's look at a profile i'll just quickly go here one second i think the net is a little slow i'll just call out so when someone lands on a handle so the first thing you do is you see a bio right you see the information about that person or company or place here they have uh, their stories come up so if it's a recent story it will show here you click on it and it will show the story here right if it's uh, uh, an old story you can save it here in different folders like that these are the posts and you know feeds of content uh, that people put uh now talking about different content formats for example uh this is a carousel a carousel is something which you can scroll through i'm so sorry i change the post i have to click on this yeah so for example this is a post that we've done which says uh a nice design project where modern meets uh, old school you know like like that so it's like just a creative project so this is like a representation of whatsapp if you see closely it's a whatsapp logo so what nothing to do with real estate it's got everything to do with advertising but i'm just showing you what a carousel post is gmail you know uh, like that icloud so wikipedia so this format of content where you can just uh, swipe through different photos and videos it's called a carousel uh, then uh, sometimes people put a a, a a a long format video so stories go on the top like this is the part where people put stories but if you put a long format video that becomes a reel so this is a reel you know like there's some kids having fun right so when you are recording a reel for a client pitch so this is like our team in india doing something funny so you know like that so uh, people love creating that funny quick quirky format what we'll do is i'll show you some examples from uh, a couple of real estate agents also to you know give you like give you a better idea so let's look at one of these ladies uh so i showed you an example in the beginning of this lady real estate michelle uh she is a sales person at some company in whatsoever now she has put some stories uh these are the stories that she's put on her instagram less work and more personal life so some wedding she was at because it was a long weekend so no one was working anyhow you know so um uh, she was at a wedding parties with friends finally getting a, so more personal side of stuff but if you go to her posts here and you can access all of these things on instagram app also i'm just showing it to you on the web uh so posts are mostly photographs that's her style of doing things you know like a glimpse into her life but she does talk about real estate she does talk about you know 
uh, work to in between, which are like more photo uh, centric things, like massive project on much uh, coveted streets at Moor Park. Whatever, whatever, something you know, restoring, and she's put a picture of her doing some work also. So she puts a glimpse of those things too. Then coming to reels. So these reels are those long format videos, and I think uh, she's using reels for different things. She's going live. Uh, sorry, she's recording a video talking about something. Uh, like this is, I think, one some listing she has done. Uh, it's uh, 1636 Bathurst Street, something four bedrooms, five bathrooms, uh, three parking uh, cars garage. And then uh, it is close to TTC and blah, blah, blah. So she's listed that and, you know, uh, she's got a very nice video made and she's put that as an Instagram reel. You can even shoot it yourself or you can have like someone nice do it. So she's also very smartly put her, uh, you know, shop talk in between her personal talk. So many people do that. It's, it's like a mix of, you know, your personal life, how you, uh, your day goes by, the things you do, the knowledge you carry, and then some shop talk like listings and what you're trying to sell and, what properties are there in the market, how you add value, thoughts and knowledge about market. So like that, uh, she is using a mix of both. Uh, then uh, this is that lady that I was talking about. Uh, she is uh, another uh, real estate salesperson. She's a realtor also. Uh, she talks about mostly knowledge. Like, you know, I was showing you these things. Real estate agents talking to loan officers about interest rates. So she's made a reel on that. Uh, when the listing agent tells you the se that sellers are negotiable, me when I meet someone that says they want to uh, get into real estate right now, so see she's trying to be funny, you know, like uh, then she must have made some humor, right? Something funny, and you know, like people are also engaging with her, like uh, the number one prerequisite. Uh, it's flexible workers, you're your own boss, blah, 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 whatever. Uh, make my own schedule and then laughing because, you know, your customers never let you have your own schedule. Like they'll call you anytime. They'll, they'll ask you questions anytime. So people are like trying to also have some humor, but at least in the head of everyone who's seeing her content subconsciously, people get to know she's a real estate agent or a realtor. She, she has knowledge about her field. She knows uh, her stuff she can help you sell your house she can help you find the right house so people get connected to such things right so if we if, if we look at her content she's done a mix of uh, uh she does a lot of humor <laughs> let's say that what people think being a realtor looks like yeah and what it really is like i think she'll do that also i'm assuming what it actually looks like you know like uh, just trying to be funny, you know, carrying so many bags and cups and folders and five. And like I, many, some real estate people follow her. They're also laughing. And always remember when, when someone is engaging uh, on the content, their friends also get to see it. That's how these platforms work, you know? So people get to know, okay, this is one lady who does real estate, who does realtor work. So her, her tool, her style is humor. She's using humor and knowledge. Some people use empathy. That lady that we show, uh, saw uh, earlier to this one, she was not using humor. She was using information and pictures, but very good pictures, like great photography. So everyone has their own style and that's something we need to uh, make a mix of. Uh, when you meet another realtor who loves making reels as much as you do, so they're making reels together and uh, again, listing a property, then partying and then working together and, you know, and helping clients and this and that. So, it's like a glimpse into the life, her life and what she does. And very smartly, she's plugging in, you know, those listings and what she can do for you. So it's like a mix of that. Uh, another example. Okay. So let's, I think this one we've not discussed. Let's do that. So I think this is one gentleman from uh, Vancouver, I guess. I'm not sure. Uh, but BC for sure. Uh, Mandeep Dura. So uh, his bio says helped. Oh yeah. This was the example I was telling you guys about. See. Help to 90 families in 2021. I'm assuming buying homes only. <laughs> what else could he have helped with? So helping you build wealth with real estate. Free real estate uh, consult realtor. So very smartly he's put that free tag on his Instagram that he'll give you a free consultation, uh, which is okay. Like his, his way of marketing his own personal brand for real estate. He's uh, put his website also here. And if I look at his handle now, I'll see. So these are some of the stories he's put. Like some quote. You know, I think that's pretty much it. And then he's also put top 20 uh, Surrey real estate agents on social media. So I think he's he's uh, been featured somewhere. Uh, he's uh, put some motivational quote. 
then he's put a video of you know like a luxury custom home tour so he's talking about the you know how much space is there now see this is not a very fancy camera produced video it's not at all he just used his phone and he's used uh, so sorry we'll just go back uh, he just used his phone and you know like some good uh, narration of what the listing is like so he starts with, you know this is the listing he then flips his camera and then takes you through a tour of the house and his followers can have a quick a glimpse of you know what all is there in the house and can send in their inquiries and talk about stuff and then again family i think every person who's selling something on instagram has their human side on their instagram too which is good so he's put a picture with grandparents and you know something like that he's categorized all his stories into different folders here so these are called highlights on instagram it's very easy to make you know like once you put a story you can just go to it and add it into a particular highlight some uh, so for sale see now why i really wanted to show this gentleman's example to all of you uh, one if you want to know more about him you can check out the stories here if you want to see the properties he sold you can check out the stories here if you want to see what's up for grabs the listings he has you can check this out but i don't know why everyone has their family also mentioned my boys i think it just brings out the more human part of you know how you are um, and not make everything very salesy so clients uh, maybe wife i don't know my boys you know like that so um, uh different folders so let's look at uh, a few of these examples i just quickly open this so i think these are some listings he's just sold he just picked up the pictures and videos not very good creative wise but see this is this is decent because he is using like instagram story format content i'll just go back please yeah so accepted offer i was able to secure this 72000 lower than recent sale so he's trying to just show off that also uh things he's achieved you know like that so like a very nice uh he's also shared his google reviews on instagram why not i mean that's just you know being smart well, i don't like the newspaper pictures because that's not how instagram works but anyway so <laughs> he's also put a picture of a bank draft i think which he got from the client or something i don't know so <laughs> like that but see it, it gives you like if i'm if i am wanting to buy or sell my house and i spend 15 minutes on this guy's instagram account i know he knows his business i'll get to know that he's not a novice or a you know like someone just for the sake of doing things all that uh, legitimacy all, all these reviews testimonials that overall outlook that this guy knows his stuff i should talk to him will come out through all of these things that he's putting you know so that's very important um then uh, let's see what is i think this is more like clients and sneak peek into life so i think in on facebook also i showed you lots of people uh, have these uh, sold pictures and happy client you know pictures and stories and you know different things so he just put that client lunch client meetings partying some photo i don't know whatever so i think that's something personal for him so uh, if we look at the posts now like what kind of content this guy's posting uh, we can see uh, one he he sells a lot of stuff so he gets uh, featured here and there too he uh, is part of some group some some brokerage and he promotes that or is part of some association something like that sec uh, third lots of videos where he comes up and talks about you know uh, things uh, like real estate and market and this and that but largely it's a mix of everything we can see he, he does listings uh, he posts that he i think he goes to each individual listing and uh, uh talks about what that listing is so what i really like also is that he's not investing a lot into making content you know he just put a camera somewhere and just started speaking and this he's showing you what it is so you know that's also something very interesting uh and like this people get to know okay this is what this guy does and this is the listing up uh, this is what is there in store for us uh, if you look at it he has used a lot of hashtag we will talk about hashtags in a bit but uh, uh just to tell you people find each other on instagram through hashtags i also found this guy because i was looking for hashtags related to real estate and realtors and agents and stuff and uh, if you see you know canadian realtor indian realtor maybe people search for that i don't know uh uh realtor for life the realtor punjabi realtor uh langley real estate sare real estate i don't know how it's pronounced i'm so sorry realtor is it sare or is it sare i don't know so top selling agent you know stuff like that so he's 
used all of those uh, hashtags to be visible and I, i will talk about hashtags in one minute but uh, it's a good practice you know so if i look at this he has talked about the location price description don't hesitate to reach out this but no one will call i think if, if i want to reach out to him i'll just go to his profile here and i can just connect here like that's how generally people do it unless you are very old school and you like calling people like that so you can just go here and you can you know uh, message or contact or whatever so you can do those things right so yes you think i might be noise is dropping out that's because of the internet no i don't think internet the mic is not supported no am i audible guys on zoom can you hear me or look at the chat that they send a lot of message oh i was just going on with the Mm. I'll go on the top. Okay. Uh, no, I think the mic should be fine because I used the same device last time also. Same device, same laptop. It shouldn't be. We keep losing audio. We last few thirty seconds. Every it can be internet issue at their end also, by the way. Like. No, no. Even I'm checking my computer. So then, no. But I'll tell you why. Because Zoom prompts unstable internet connection on the top. It it comes it comes written also. It does. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Do you want to do that? So I'm anyhow recording this on my computer, so I'll share the whole video. So you suggest what should we do? Like okay, we can take five minutes break and we can reboot. Not a problem. I can. We can do that. Sure. Can we? इंटरनेट कनेक्शन आई थिंक यू कैन ऑल्सो माइट है सेंटर uh yeah of course i'll send the presentation shireen uh, i'm recording it on my own computer this time i don't know what happened last time but i'm doing it on my own so we can take a 5 minutes break and reboot the internet okay. so uh, we'll just uh, resume in 5 minutes